Good evening. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, administration, faculty, staff, students, and alumni of the Alabama State University, welcome to the Ralph D. Abernathy Lecture Series, an annual observance of the anniversary of the Montgomery Bus Boycott that is sponsored by the National Center for the Study of Civil Rights and African American Culture at ASU. ASU is honored to close out Montgomery's citywide celebration of the Montgomery Bus Boycott, which began on December 1st, Rosa Parks Day. In addition to the bus boycotts anniversary, 2020 is a centennial celebration of women's suffrage. As the university at the heart of the modern civil rights movement, we recognize the importance of celebrating all of the African-American women who were litigants of the Browder v. Gale case, as well as ASU's own women leaders who founded the Women's Political Council. I invite you to enjoy this evening's program as we commemorate the mass meetings of the Montgomery Bus Boycott and honor these trailblazing women who not only ignited the Montgomery Bus Boycott and led to the Supreme Court ruling that overturned bus segregation, but also sparked the entire modern civil rights movement. I hope you enjoy this evening. We bring you greetings on behalf of the National Center for the Study of Civil Rights and African American Culture at Alabama State University. We are happy to host this very special program in celebration of the 65th anniversary of the Montgomery Bus Boycott, which speaks to our mission to serve as a research center, a living museum, and a repository of information relevant to the study of civil rights and African American culture. It is our intent to reach and teach people from around the world about the rich history of Alabama State University and Montgomery's role in the major episodes of the civil rights struggle. Tonight, we honor the mass meetings of the Montgomery Bus Boycott, the members of the historic Women's Political Council and the plaintiffs of the Browner v. Gale civil rights case. We must also pause to honor the life and legacy of the late Reverend Robert S. Gratz beloved civil rights activist and humanitarian for social justice. Reverend Gratz and his wife, Mrs. Jean Gratz, are loved for their life's work in civil and human rights that began in 1955 at the time of the Montgomery bus boycott. The Gratz changed the course of history as courageous whites in Montgomery who were welcomed as part of the inner circle of leaders that planned the Montgomery bus boycott. During their later years, Reverend and Mrs. Gratz returned to Montgomery and served as members of our center's steering committee, lecturing to people from around the world about the importance of the beloved community as envisioned by their lifelong friend, Reverend Martin Luther King. Tonight, we honor the legacy of Reverend Gratz and his unceasing work for nonviolent social change as we celebrate the 65th anniversary of the Montgomery Bus Boycott. We welcome you to our program today. Thank you. In the recent passing of Reverend Robert Gretz, the Gretz family lost a loving father. The National Center lost a dedicated consultant 
and friend, the civil rights community, Montgomery, Alabama, and the world lost a faithful servant and a gallant fighter for the cause of justice and equality in American society. Reverend Gratt's death ended four long years of intense suffering due to medical conditions which robbed him of all activity. But the fact that he was able to cheat death during this period shows that the hand of God was on his life. Gratt discovered a purpose to his life in the late 1940s as a student at Capitol University in Columbus, Ohio. A research assignment introduced him to the plight of African Americans at that university. Over the next several years and several decades, until health problems began to silence his voice, Gratz, with support of his wife, Jeannie, involved himself in campaigns to improve the lives of individuals in marginal and oppressed communities throughout the nation. But Grass made his most significant contributions in the area of African-American civil rights. His ministerial studies and seminary degree provided an entry point into a battle which gave him prominence and also a battle which at times threatened to take his life and that of his family. Within six months of Gress arrival in Montgomery, Alabama in 1955 as pastor of a black Lutheran congregation in this city, without hesitation, he placed himself on the side of 50,000 African Americans in that epic struggle to overcome bus segregation. The only white on the forefront of the bus segregation period, Grass served on the executive board of the Montgomery Improvement Association, the organization which oversaw the bus protest. He drove in a boycott's carpool, and he carried the message of the bus protest across the nation. He stood alongside Martin Luther King Jr., Ralph Abernathy, and E.D. Nixon, and others in the 382-day protest to beat back the forces of racial injustice. Grass paid a price for his stand for truth, justice, and righteousness. Besides enduring endless threatening phone calls, having sugar placed in his car's gas tank, and his automobile tires slashed. The Ku Klux Klan bombed his home twice. The intent was to kill him and his entire family. But Gretz and his wife believed that God would not allow anything bad to happen to them. That's a direct quote. They had crossed the Rubicon, they said, when they stood for the rights of all people to equality. And Gress also said, until God tells us to slow down, we will keep on pressing ahead. The Gress left Montgomery in 1958 and took on social issues throughout the nation, including poverty. At the behest of the National Center, they returned to Montgomery in 2005 to take part in the 50th anniversary of the Montgomery bus boycott. In their newfound role as consultants to the National Center, they told their story of long years of working for what Martin Luther King called the beloved community. Back in Montgomery, Grass looked back on 50 years of standing for right, and he wondered, why am I, am I still alive when so many others of my generation have passed on? The answer is obvious. He symbolized courage and commitment to an ideal 
that the nation needed to fulfill their promises of democracy and justice to all people. Reverend Gretz, we love you. We miss you. May your example of devotion to a cause beyond yourself motivate today's generation of freedom fighters to keep alive your vision of a society where love and peace, justice and equality dictate the affairs of humankind.